This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer. It's in Nashville, the state capitol. We are joined by Terry Lynn Weaver. She is a member of the House of Representatives. She's keeping it real. She's making it a serious uh, job. And I want to speak with you about refugee resettlement. It's a very it's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. Uh, and <laughs> with what's happened in Brussels recently, what's yes. happened in Paris recently, well, we don't know if refugees were involved. What we do know is there are a lot of frayed nerves over True. the potential entry of folks from the Middle East into our uh, borders. That's Tell true. me what you're hearing from your constituents. Well, when I go to Walmart or the grocery store or put gas in the truck, um, I'm approached by many of my constituents, Brad, and they just say, hey, Terry Lynn, what are you doing to protect <laughs> right. our state? What are you doing to um, concerning that issue? Right. And so, first and foremost, I took an oath in 2009, right across the hall, right. to protect the citizens of this state, to stand for my U.S. Constitution and the state constitution. I take that very seriously. And, uh, and so, with that being said, um, I think to answer my constituents, Please. I says, well, I'm going to do all I can under the Constitution. Right. That's my peripheral. That's my backyard. Sure, sure. And so, a, a lawsuit is being... Um, uh, considered? Is it's, that it's all, it's, that's all done. All the behind the scenes is to, to move forward is done okay. because it, 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 the genesis of it was in the Senate. And basically what it does is the governor could be the plaintiff and he, uh, it, we will be represented by a public uh, law firm. Not the so, attorney general? No. Okay. So, which makes it pro bono. So it's free. So this is no charge to taxpayers. I okay. love it even more. I love that okay, too. So you, Regardless of your position, free is good. <laughs> that's always good. Because every time you, we always ask well, how much it's going to cost. It's all good. So in the, the short of the long of it is, is we are seeking for a declaratory judgment. Uh -huh. We want clarity in a very cloudy scenario. Right. We want to know our stance and our place as legislators, as right. the state. So that comes under the Tenth Amendment, who I'm a huge fan of. And the Tenth Amendment tells us? It's, uh, according to a constitutional republic, of right. which I believe <laughs> uh, strongly in, we are sovereign states. Right. And by golly, it's time we start acting like it. And so what we know is that powers that are specifically given to the federal government are intended to vest to the states. Bingo. And so as we speak today, we do know that the federal government has the authority over issues of immigration. Correct. But then there's the question about do they have the authority over how a state spends its own money and that's where this lawsuit comes that's in. That's We want clarity on it. On that issue and it, hey, when in this lawsuit it will take it even to other departments because the feds mandate things to the states and as a state legislator we have to pass a budget. But this so is, but if we're gonna, if they're gonna mandate something then they require us to pay for it. Right. How do you do that? But explain the specifics of the lawsuit because we know that, look, Tennessee, Arkansas, whomever it may be, the state cannot say, the federal government, we don't want these people on our borders. The state can't do that. But the state can, at least according to the lawsuit, spend its money as it chooses. Well, we would like to have a, a place at the table to discuss it. Clearly. Kind of know who, who's, who's coming, here? No, how I many, hear you. Um, how much it's going to cost, right. because with that comes subsidies, which right. comes housing, Medicaid, it's such a education. So there's all right. those kind of things to play. And, and, and let me make this clear. This is not in any ways to, uh, unwelcoming to mm. refugees, because uh, I have a secret to tell you. I'm the daughter of a refugee. Mm. My father immigrated here. No, he was a refugee in 52 from, from Brestovich, Yugoslavia. Oh, wow. So they were literally chased out of their home yeah. country. But before 1980, I'm the grandchild of refugees. well, before 1980, mm. and my mm. father is still alive, before 1980, we actually played by the rules. And when we had the 1980 Refugee Resettlement Program, mm. 40, 50 years now, we're not, our immigration system is obviously broken because mm -hmm. we've been living in lawlessness and not tending to the way that, that they originally were, were right. put in motion. For instance, here's an example. Um, my grandfather had to be sponsored 
right. by his brother who already lived here, and they had to have a job waiting for the head of the household. Sure. So there were there were parameters that you right. you would abide by. There were no subsidies. There were no right. food stamps. There was no. My daddy was twelve, sitting in first grade class, learning English. How long do you think yeah. it took him to learn English? Very fast. Very fast. Yeah, I was going to say. So, but anyway, this again, this lawsuit is going to give us clarity because I will tell you personally, as a law, as a legislator, I've been in the funk since last June mm. when they, when the federal courts have overrode our Constitution on issues of marriage. We passed law, we put things in perspective that we defined marriage and so we're making laws in our state and courts are overruling right. us and we're just kind of going to be kind of like you, you know, well why right. am I here? So <laughs> I recently spoke with Representative Pody mm -hmm. and he had proposed yes. that Tennessee, um, because of the 2006 voter initiative, determined that we cannot abide by the U.S. Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, uh, Representative Pody's bill did not survive. Correct. And so while Tennessee has gone on the record as opposing the Oberfeld decision, mm -hmm. at this stage, Tennessee is abiding by the U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Yes, greeting our teeth. <laughs> so, but it really begs the question, not even so much about this ruling or that ruling, but that tension between states' rights and federal rights. And when I say right. tension, I don't necessarily mean anger. No. I, I, I mean, we really we want clarity. What, what, what a unique experiment America is, yeah. you know, 200 and plus years later. Yeah. Um, so where do you go from here? You're looking to have the federal government declare or the courts declare that the federal government cannot force Tennessee to spend certain monies as a result of refugee resettlement? Is that what you're seeking? Well, the first step is we've got to pass the resolution. Right. And it's in the, in the committee system right now on the House side. It's passed in the Senate. I have 74 House members, bipartisan House members, signed on to this. 74. That's a we lot. We have 99. That's a lot. Do you think that's a majority? That's a, um, is it a super majority? <laughs> Almost. I think it's not the margin. So it's the but. will of the both chambers to proceed with this. And so, um, we're going to get that passed. Once that gets passed, then we'll 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 take it from there. Uh, we have the uh, the law firm that is is willing right. to proceed down the road, and it's the first step to getting clarity on uh, on where we stand on our Tenth Amendment as a state. So, with regard to the refugee, refugee question, reset, yes. If you win, what would you get? I guess is what I'm asking. We'll have more of a say because it will be declared that the federal government cannot determine how Tennessee spends its own money as it relates? Is that ultimately what you're looking? Look, I just, we want, we're not saying, we're not putting a wall around our state and saying no mm. refugees. That's not what we're saying. We just want to know, we want to know who and how. You know, obviously our immigration system, that's not, that's had, held by the feds. Right. And that's obviously broken. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and they realize that. But, and we're just very vulnerable. I mean, all we have to do is look across the pond. Right. And we don't want that happening here. But at the same time, we have got to put things into place on the federal side and on the state side to protect the people and living I, I, and in and our country. And I must ask you, when you think about what's happening across the pond, in Belgium, in France, Brussels, Paris, major cities, a city like San Bernardino, a small city in California was attacked. If mm -hmm. San Bernardino could be attacked, what about Nashville? Well, what about Memphis, Murfreesboro, Knoxville? I mean, these are scary times. They are. They're, they're t times that try men's souls. Mm. But we've seen these times before. We have. We just need to have people that are, um, I mean, we're just putting our heads together, trying to figure out how we can best secure our, our nation and secure our states and do due diligence to do that and not just put our head in the sand. And I thank you for joining us. She is Terry Lynn Weaver. She is a member of the Tennessee House of Representatives. My name is Brad Pomerantz, Charter Local Edition.